and let us all that we can to build a better future. This is breaking news that just happened right now, and I have to say, I am absolutely a okay with how this has turned out because the attacks on Donald Trump, and I want to be very clear here, I say this not as a Trump supporter, but as somebody who's talked to and interviewed candidates who are third party, who are ran as libertarians, greens, or socialists, or independent, who have been kicked off the ballot, or have used that had to fight tooth and nail just to secure their ability to be back on the ballot in whatever state that they were in. Now, Hardlands Media, we have a long history of interviewing third parties and independent candidates who were pushed aside, kicked off the ballot by both Democratic and Republican politicians. Now, why is it significant? Because Hardlands Media, we believe in being consistent. And the attacks on Donald Trump, especially with him being kicked off the ballot here in Col- not only in Colorado, but even potentially here in my home state of Illinois, are wrong. Democrats, if you want to face off against Trump, you're going to have to debate him. You're going to have to face him. And the Supreme Court just recently ruled in favor that Trump cannot be kicked off the Colorado ballot. So you know what that means? Even though it's early in the morning right now, oh, you better believe I'm going to be watching and observing MSNBC later today. The Rachel Maddow meltdown will be magnifique. It will be just so delicious and beautiful. It's 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 going to be like a perfect service in Hell's Kitchen, right? There you go, perfect service. And yes, there have been a few episodes of Hell's Kitchen where they had a perfect service, and it was just like R- Ramsey didn't need to raise his voice at all. And I I I am hoping. Shout out to you, Case Study QB. I'm 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 gonna charge you with the task of looking for some of those juicy morsels, man, because. You you got to believe that Rachel Maddow is going to be having a meltdown after this. Hey, don't believe me? Look at the shock look on MSNBC right now. <laughs> no, I didn't pause it. No, I didn't pause it. But this is the face of every single vote. Blue, no matter who liberal in America. Like, <gasps> Trump's on the ballot still in Colorado. Oh, no. See, see, I told you, vote blue, no matter who. You better hope that Donald Trump doesn't win any of his legal battles, and now he's won this one right here. Ah, goodness gracious, Cretaceous. This is going to be beautiful. All right, we just got the breaking news. Thank you for being with us here on MSNBC. The Supreme Court issuing a ruling on the Colorado ballot case. I want to go straight to Ken Delanian, who is outside the Supreme Court with this decision. Ken, what do we know? Good morning, Anna. We've learned that it was a nine to nothing decision ruling that Donald Trump. (laughs) Nine to what? Nine to nothing. That's right. You heard it. Nine to nothing. Nine to zero. So that means, oh, no, the liberal Supreme Court justice has voted in favor of Trump. Oh, no. Hold on. Let's listen to that one more time. This I'm sorry If, if 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 I'm being too mean. Well then, too bad. Okay, I'm. So, I I just, I just can't tolerate stupid people. I, I I can't. I can't. I can't do it. I just, I just can't do it. Vote blue, no matter who. You embarrass yourselves. And seriously, conservative commentators, stop saying Democrats and liberals are progressives, please. I'm begging you, don't associate me with those people. And before anyone types in the comment section below, what do you mean those people? I mean those people. The Supreme Court with this decision, Ken. What do we know? Good morning, Anna. We've learned that it was a nine to nothing decision ruling that Donald Trump can be on the ballot in Colorado and other states. uh, Oh, my goodness. Oh, that smack in the mouth. Mm. You you could just see it. It's like it's like those old school classic world star videos where you saw someone get knocked out. That's what the vote blue no matter who people are feeling right now. That that person knocked out and everyone's screaming world star. Justices during the oral argument seemed very skeptical of the idea that one state could decide for the nation uh, whether Donald Trump was an insurrectionist and was therefore disqualified under this 150 year old provision. Now we know that there was not a single justice who who held that view. So there were no dissents to this 9-0 decision uh, ruling that Donald Trump can remain on the ballot in Colorado as voters go to the polls tomorrow during Super Tuesday and also in Maine, where there had been a decision to disqualify him from the ballot. Uh, And and this ruling, we understand, has the effect of prohibiting other states from attempting to do so. Oh, oh, Democrats and Nikki. That's not her name, Haley. 
if first you don't succeed, lift yourself up and try again. Right? How's that working out for you, lovelies? <laughs> See, me and Daniel, we called this out. We called this out. But wait, it wasn't only just Hard Lens Media. It was Revolutionary Blackout Network. It was the Jimmy Dore Show. It was Indie News Network. It was Due Dissidence. And hey, you know what? Just like those, just like those old uh, '70s shows that you know when they did like those um, what's it? Those variety hour shows. Like, hey, even you at home can join in. That's right. Even all you beautiful people watching Hard Lens Media right now in the morning. Even you. Hold on. You know what? Wait. To do this properly. To do this properly. Hold on. Oops, hold on. To do this properly. Let me just remove this here. <clears throat> Even you at home called this out. Well done, audience. Well done indeed. <laughs> oh, nine to zip. Oh, oh my God. <clears throat> you know I'm going to be talking about the Rachel Maddow meltdown tomorrow. You know I'm going to. You know, I got to let me rewind this just a little bit. And also in Maine, where there had been a decision to disqualify him from the ballot. Uh, and, and this ruling, we understand, has the effect of prohibiting other states from attempting to do so. And that really reflects what we heard from both liberal and conservative justices during the oral arguments on, uh, for example, Elena Kagan confronting uh, the, the plaintiffs, essentially saying, your problem here is that you're arguing that one state can decide for the nation who can be president. And no justice was willing to go along with that. Oh, oh, up the wazoo. Hold on. I got to hear that again. I'm sorry. Am, am I, if, 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 I, if I'm being mean here, too bad, so sad. I know that there was not a single justice who, who held that view. So there were no dissents to this 9-0 decision uh, ruling that Donald Trump can remain on the ballot in Colorado as voters go to the polls tomorrow during Super Tuesday, and also in Maine, where there had been a decision to disqualify him from the ballot. Uh, and, and this ruling, we understand, has the effect of prohibiting other states from attempting to do so. And that really reflects what we heard from both liberal and conservative justices during the oral arguments on, a, uh, it, for example, Elena Kagan confronting uh, the, the plaintiffs, essentially saying, your problem here is that you're arguing that one state can decide for the nation who can be president, and no justice was willing to go along with that. And Lisa, you are looking through, we have our, our, our Lisa Rubin here with us uh, as you look through. I'm sorry, but if this doesn't rec uh, entitle it, I don't know what does, but come on. Right now, what a lot of Democrats are feeling, vote blue no matter who are feeling, are feeling this. Oof. 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 Miguel, I can't thank you enough for this clip. Seriously, I, I, I can't. I can't. I, can't. I, I, just, I, I just can't thank you enough. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyways, through this decision that was just just put on the website there at the Supreme Court, what stands out most to you besides the fact that this was a nine zero decision? It was a nine zero decision, Anna, and the decision was decided on the grounds that Congress, not the states, has the power to enforce Section three of the 14th Amendment. Still, you have four justices concurring in the judgment, meaning they agree with the result, but also concurring separately and saying that the way that they disagree with the majority or the per curiam opinion is that they don't feel that they needed to decide that Congress is the exclusive enforcement mechanism. Both Justice Barrett, who is concurring only for herself, and then Justices Sotomayor, Kagan, and Jackson concurring separately say they don't need to decide anything more than this is not a right that belongs to the states, but all four of them casting doubt on the idea that the exclusive mechanism of enforcement here is congressionally enacted legislation. So, uh-oh, what? Get ready. You, you know what that means? You know what that means? And I'm probably wrong on this, but if it does happen, one it's it's going to suck for a lot of us, but let, let me explain why. Be prepared for the bombardment of emails from a lot of vote blue, no matter who, or uh, Democrat politicians saying, write your congressman and tell us to pass a congressional legislation to ban Trump. I I promise you that now, now, now that idea has been enacted, that, that little hamster is going to be running in the vote blue, no matter who's head. Like, we got to go to Congress. Go to Congress. Well, gee, majority of Congress is Republican. I wonder. I wonder. 
You think they're going to go ahead and do that? Those those Republican politicians, you think they're actually going to do everything like, oh, yeah, we got to stop Trump? No, no, they're not. Or we're going to bar with emails. We're going to we're going to hear this. And I'm willing to bet like Rachel Maddow is going to say, we got to go to Congress now. We got to go to Congress now. Congress, it's up to you. Republican politicians, it's up to you. Like they're going to be pleading to Republican politicians. I'm like, get that. You know what? And if it doesn't happen, great. I was wrong. But if it does happen, I'm 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 probably going to be immature and laugh at them. That's important because one other way that you could find that someone is disqualified is through, for example, a federal court ruling. Or you could find that someone is an insurrectionist through their criminal um through criminal liability. So there are a number of different ways that I think these justices are raising. Section three could have been enforced, and yet the per curiam decision says not only does the power not belong to the states, you have to have Congress act affirmatively in order to disqualify someone from the ballot. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. One more time. Oof. 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 I'm sorry, man. Ah, uh, Supreme Court hands Trump victory in Colorado 14th Amendment ballot ch challenge. Oh, right there. Right there. This is funny. This is funny. This. This is funny. Okay. So as we all know, the Supreme Court unanimously ruled Colorado cannot disqualify former President Donald Trump from the ballot under the 14th Amendment insurrection ban, a historic decision that preserves Trump's ability to seek a second presidential term. Monday's unsigned decision effectively ends the long shot efforts that aim to prevent Trump from returning to the White House, handing a monumental legal victory to the former president on the eve of Super Tuesday when he is poised to close uh, to close in on clinching the Republican nomination. By the way, just just so you all know. Apparently, Nikki Haley, that's not her name, won the D.C. primary. So, <laughs> okay, she won something. <laughs> Voters and advocacy groups had filed dozens of challenges to Trump's ballot eligibility in states across the country, claiming his actions surrounding, you guessed it, January 6, 2021, capital attack triggered his disqualification. Jesus Christ, I am tired of January 6, okay? I'm tired of it. The high court said sided with Trump by ruling a singular state has no unilateral authority to enforce the 14th Amendment to disqualify federal candidates. Liberals, you're throwing shite at the wall and seeing what could stick. <laughs> I got to tell you that, that that little image of Trump on the hill holding an axe as a bunch of liberals are watching Rachel Maddow foam in the mouth of the TV on a dark and stormy night. It's, it's playing out, you know. It's, it's so great. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. So what can we so so what can we take away from this? What what can we take away from this? Well, first of all, liberals are going to do everything they can to try and disqualify Trump. Now, we know that Trump is dealing with a lot of legal issues. There's um of course the situation in Georgia, which I think is also going to be ruling in Trump's favor. Uh there are so many people that are trying to bankrupt Trump, but I don't think that's even going to stick as well. They're, they're, they're trying everything they can because so many people in the vote blue, no matter who crowd are emotionally triggered by Donald Trump. And what I mean by this is that Trump, his actions and the way he speaks triggers something in the vote blue, no matter who mindset, because secretly they're just like him. They're just better at hiding it. You see, Trump is able to make people act in an inappropriate manner that's detrimental to their mindset, their health, their body. And the thing is, a lot of Vote Blue, no matter who organizations, progressive groups that are afraid of Trump, fall into this trap of trying to fight him and losing. Because no matter what, Trump is the master at media. He's the master of even making fun of himself. And every time the liberals try and get him, he's able to crawl out of their trap. It never works. It never succeeds because we cannot forget the debates between him and Hillary Clinton. Remember, Dave Chappelle did a great stand-up opening on SNL a long time ago when he recounted a tale of the debate between Hillary Clinton and Trump when Trump was talking about the system being corrupt and the moderator saying, well, how do you know it's corrupt? Because Trump said he used it. So he knows how the neoliberal system is set up because who set up the neoliberal system? People like the Clintons, the Kennedys, the Bushes, the Mitch McConnells, the Nancy Pelosi's, the Democratic and Republican politicians, the dynastic families that work for their corporate donors. And Trump, being who he was, was able to manipulate and walk through and understand all the loopholes to survive and thrive. 
You think they're really going to get him? Same thing with the taxes, too. They're never going to do anything about taxes to, to hold the top 1% accountable because that means these rich politicians have to pay taxes, too. So all this fear-mongering about Trump, all it did for him right now, especially with this legal victory, is give a boost to his numbers. And dare I say it, since this happened today, if this doesn't inspire enthusiasm amongst Trump supporters to turn out to vote for him on the Super Tuesday primary, then I don't know what does because this shows, for without a shadow of a doubt, that not only has Trump beat this system or beat the system that the liberals were trying to put on him, but it also shows that he has a very good chance of securing the Republican nomination. This is truly inevitable. There's nothing that the RNC can do. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm willing, I'm willing to bet that the uh, establishment will try everything they can to get Trump off the ballot. Now, does, now, this doesn't make Trump a hero at all, no. But this does show that at this point in time, anyone that was anti-Trump or has suffers from Trump derangement syndrome is going to be taking a massive L. And I'm just looking forward to MSNBC tonight. I, I, I just got to wonder just what the meltdown is going to look like, the Rachel Maddow meltdown. Because she's going to be like, this is it. This is the end of democracy. What democracy are you talking about? It's been sold a long time ago, to quote Jimmy Dore.